As a Thanksgiving present, I finally released uh, Vui version 2.0 on early Thursday morning. So what that means is uh, that those of you who are interested can go and download Vui 2.0001 from my webpage uh, and can then also get the the Connect Viewer software version 1.1 from my webpage as well. can just uh, compile the whole thing, build it, and then actually start playing, uh, doing 3D reconstruction on your, on your Connect. Um, now, some of you already did that and probably were wondering why their 3D video looks like utter crap. And the reason for that is uh, the Kinect obviously has two cameras, which you can see in the, uh, in the picture here. So on the left, you have the depth camera. On the right, we have the regular old webcam. This is not a 3D reconstruction. And in order to make this work, you have to calibrate those two cameras to each other. Now, in the software package that I released, there is already uh, calibration information in there. It's that uh, file calibration matrices.dat. But the problem is, as I found out, um, all connects are different, which means that the calibration matrices are packaged with the software are most probably not going to work with your devices. So what it means is, before you can really start doing stuff, you'll have to calibrate your Kinect cameras, and then you can start using it. So as of uh, software release version 1.1, I have a very simple poor man's calibration so uh, system in there, and I'm going to uh, demonstrate, I'm running that right now, and I'm going to demonstrate how it works uh, so that everybody can start uh, start really doing stuff. So what you need to do is you need to make a calibration target like this one here. So what I did is I just took an old DVD. Uh, actually, when you buy the Kinect, it comes with a DVD that you can wonderfully use for this. Uh, glued a, uh, just a piece of paper to there, cut it out so that I have the circle of paper, and then just glued a little handle to the back, had it lying around. You can, of course, do that a bit more fancy if you want to. So the idea is that you show this calibration target head-on to the camera, in a whole bunch of different positions uh, all, through, uh, all through space. So not just in different positions in X and Y, but you also have to go back and forth uh, and, and sample the entire space. And then you essentially save tie points between the depth image, actually I can show it with a mouse, with the, between the depth image here uh, and the color image here. And then if you save a whole bunch of those, uh, then the program that's already packaged called Calibrate Cameras will read those tie points and create a calibration matrix. So let me show you how you can collect those tie points. It's a bit manual process right now. Again, I uh, haven't really had a chance to make that all fancy. Of course, you can more or less automate the process by using some computer vision software. But since not everybody wants to go and install OpenCV just for the purpose of doing a quick camera calibration, I figured uh, this program could turn out to be really useful. Excuse me for just a sec. Hot. OK, so let's see how that goes. What you need to do is uh, if you press the one key in the software and just hold it down and this tool selection menu pops up. This is just voice stuff. So what I need you to do is to go down to pause uh, and just let go of the one now. So now the one key can pause the video stream. I'm going to do that right now. Now the video stream is paused. I press one again, video stream is unpaused. And now the same thing you do is you press the two key and now you select from the menu down at the bottom type points and just let go. And then there's a little dialog box which says press another button and for that I just use button 3. Okay, so what we have now is we have pause on key 1 and we have tie point selector on keys 2 and 3. I'm going to show in a minute how it works. So what you do now is you take your calibration target, which I really should have made a little bit more sturdy, and you show it to the camera and you can't go too close because then you notice that in a depth image when you go too close it turns all black, meaning the camera can't see it anymore. So you don't want that. You want to get a nice flat image. You don't want to hold it at an angle like this. You want to hold it flat at the camera. So then you want to put it so that the that the color of the of the target sticks out. My target is white, and unfortunately my walls are white as well. It was a bad decision. I could have made this I don't know purple or pink or whatever. Then it would have been easier. But you know, bear with me. So I'm just going to hold this over here, uh, and then I press one to stop the video stream. Okay, and then. I just put this thing down. Again, you can't see that right now. And then I point at uh, the, the disk in one of the images and press 2. And that will identify the disk and put a box around it. And you want to make sure that you get a nice tight fit. Otherwise, it will probably not work. And I do the same thing with the depth image. So now I have two of these boxes. And now I press 3 once. And the moment you press 3, the program is going to spit out the program is going to spit out a few numbers to your console. Actually, uh, five numbers. And the first three numbers are the 3D position of the point you measured in the depth image. And the second two numbers are the point you measured in the depth uh, in the color image. So you have to do this a whole bunch of times 
I'm just going to not even stop the frame right now. Actually, I need another hand, I guess. Um, okay, so point it here, press 2. Of course, you really want to stop the frame because you have to make sure to get exactly the same position in both frames. This calibration point is going to be no good, so don't do what I just did. Always pause. Um, and you do that about, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 times. Uh, you're going to get a whole bunch of these uh, of these tie points spit out to the console. And then you just uh, copy everything that the program printed out and you copy it into a file called calibrationdata.csv. There's already one, no, actually there's not one package. So it has to be an uppercase C and an uppercase D. Software is pretty stupid right now, it expects a certain name. Uh, and then I'm not going to do that now, but you just run calibrate cameras. No command and arguments, nothing. It's going to read calibrationdata.csv. It's going to do some magic on those numbers in there. It's going to fit the best fitting projector transformation, to be more precise. Uh, and then it's going to write out uh, a pair of calibration matrices into the file uh, camera calibration matrices dot that, which will then in turn be loaded in by uh, Connect Viewer, and will then, if you've done this properly, uh, will give you a relatively nicely calibrated uh, color and depth image. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, just while I'm at it, just a very little introduction to the basic VUI user interface because, well, uh, you might not be used to that. Um, so now I would really need a 3D image, but I don't have one. Left mouse button, just you click it, uh, spins the spins the 3D object around, and it always spins around the center of the screen right here. Uh, if you press in the default setup the Z key, and that's a nod to those poor Macintosh people who don't have a second mouse button, then you can pan the image in the image plane. If you press Z and the left button together and move your mouse up and down, you can zoom in or out. And if you press Z and the left mouse button and shift, then you can dolly in or out. What that means is you're not zooming, you're moving the 3D image in and out of the screen. You can see how the crosshairs, which identify the screen plane, disappear in the image. So it's actually a very important thing to know how to do that because, as I mentioned, everything works around uh, the screen center. So if you want to rotate um, the image or the 3D object around the, the point on my, uh, on my screen here, then you first have to move that to the crosshairs and then you notice you can move around. So that's a very brief uh, overview. Then if you press the right mouse button, program's main menu comes up. Uh, in this particular program, the, it has only two functions. It can capture background which will take five seconds worth of background frames so that you can then remove them. And then if I go to remove background, it's going to remove the background in depth. It doesn't remove color. So what that means is this is the poor man's green screen um, that I showed in, in some of the other videos. It's not perfect. You can see this pixel spot mask there. I'm still working on that. Um, but it actually works relatively, relatively well already. Um, but that's not really the point here. The point was just how you work with the main menu. And then to exit out of the program, you can either just close the window or you hit escape or you can go all fancy and go to VUI system and quit program, which I'm going to do now. So please do me a favor. If you want to download the software VUI 2.0 version 01, uh, Connect Viewer version 1.1, I have the download URLs in the video description. Uh, compile it. Uh, I tried compiling it on Fedora 12. That's my system right here and on Mac OS 10.6.3, which worked. Um, on Ubuntu, you might have to install a couple of packages that Ubuntu doesn't get you by default. Uh, so if you get complaints about missing files, you know you're missing packages, just go hunting for them. Uh, and then, yeah, good luck. If you run into any issues, if the calibration doesn't work, do me a favor, don't send me email. I'm getting too many of those. Uh, just post a comment uh, on this video so that I can answer questions once and don't have to send out emails to everyone, which I don't mind doing, but, you know, it's more effective that way. Okay, I'm going to quit out and talk to you later.